Hello and welcome to Engine, the podcast where we talk about all things bunny and a few things not. On this very special episode, we are uh, I am going to be joined by the former Mr. Pinkamina. Uh, now, uh, do you have a name you prefer to be used? Yes, um, I go by uh, Miles Valentine um, when uh, when I'm drawing stuff. I see. It's like a pseudonym. And of course, uh, I am your you know uh, continual host, Duhod, as per usual. Uh, as of blah, no, not as per usual. Unlike as per usual, we are not going to be joined by Lightning Rabbit 101K or Cabralo95 or Joel Lynx, uh, because this is a very special interview where we're going to be talking with our very good friend Miles over here, who has, you know, very re- you know, who was the first person to come on the show. He was uh, the first interview we conducted, and there's some big news over from his Tumblr. So I thought it would be nice to, you know, step in and have a quick chat with him. You know, it's, it's actually kind of funny that you were saying that I'm your first interviewee and when I was on that episode I was promoting the blog and I, here I am in a later episode closing it. It's a little bit ironic. So yeah, you're closing uh, the Pink Amina Tumblr. Yes, um, it just came to a point where I, I had to question, you know, why I was making it. Mm. Because if you're not enjoying a project then you have to think you know, is it, is it worth continuing it? Uh, it's definitely a question you had to ask yourself. I mean, if you're doing a project, especially one that you're doing for free as a passion project, if you're not enjoying yourself, then, you know, you really got to ask yourself, is there a reason why I'd want to do- continue doing this? Yeah, I, was, I had to actually think and see, you know, what the, uh, the appeal was to begin with, because it's always something that's confused me um, as far as Pink Amina and Gore and all that stuff goes. All right. Yeah, so, you know, the Pink Amina Tumblr, uh, for those of you who didn't watch that episode or, you know, uh, just have forgotten over time, uh, the Pink Amina Tumblr was a art Tumblr, uh, comic art Tumblr, that followed the adventures of Pink Amina Diane Pai, the psychopathic version of Pinky who uh, kills people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as of the time we were talking with you, the whole Tumblr was in kind of a weird uh, situation where the storyline was really kind of picking up in an interesting direction with uh, the character, you know, facing off against other villains. Or It was kind of weird. So, so what ended up happening from there? Like, what, why did you kind of go from, you know, this point where you were really, you know, really passionate about this to suddenly realizing, wait, I'm, not, I'm just not enjoying this? God, I really don't know. It's... Um as far as uh, you know, the graphic violence and stuff, hmm. um, I think there's some inherent beauty in uh, in you know how the human body looks and even how it looks uh, underneath. Hmm. And it's it's something that you don't often get to see or draw. Fair enough. So I think uh, that might be a bit of uh, the appeal of the blog. No, that's fair. Uh, I think uh, Michelangelo was actually very famous for, uh, you know, he did you know, these great sculptures and paintings like the David and the Sistine Chapel, but he was also very fond of uh, drawing monsters because of the fact that it was a chance to, instead of drawing idealized humans, to draw kind of monstrous humans, to really play with physiology in interesting ways that most people, you know, didn't want to see. It was actually um, quite a common thing for these master artists to get cadavers in, which is a, a dead person, for them to dissect and draw um, their muscular structure and uh, their bones and stuff to get a better grasp of, you know, what makes a body. <laughs> well, I hope you haven't been uh, collecting cadavers to uh, chop them up yourself. <laughs> I didn't go, go quite that far. I'm glad to hear that at least. Um, but uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, you enjoyed drawing them, but you decided you didn't really kind of like the, yeah, you, know, you didn't like the actual violence element of it or the. Uh... Well, I found it um, a very very interesting to draw. Just um, I think that my love of just pure pony kind of overpowered that, and I started to think introspectively that I don't think that I want to harm ponies anymore because I love ponies too much. <laughs> Well, I can't say that that's a you know, particularly flawed argument to make. Not to uh, mention that it's it's a pretty small demographic anyway. There's not a lot of 
people that want to see that kind of stuff in the first place. Yeah, I yeah, I uh, notice a number of people I've talked to since uh, that interview have kind of gone, you know, like why why would someone want to draw this sort of thing? Like, I mean, like obviously there are people who do enjoy that sort of stuff, but the number of people who really kind of get into the whole graphic violence element of a you know show that is pretty far removed from graphic violence yeah not a huge demographic there it's it's just a it's an inspiration thing for me and it's just it's just not there anymore hey, no, um it's, the it, moment's passed you know hey, that's more than fair so you know where did uh, the uh, the story end off let's go on the assumption that uh, you know at least some of the listeners haven't been reading the story and you know don't know where it's gone so why don't you kind of give us a you know quick summary of where you kind of left off because I know that you didn't end it on a real conclusion point oh no it, it went it all went to shit basically <laughs> oh um, well there was this Pony Secret Service that was supposed to be working in the background that was keeping tabs on Pink Amina. Hmm. And um, at some point in the blog, they catch up with Pink Amina and uh, they abduct her and they try to, you know, get information from her about what she's been doing. Hmm. And uh, the storyline just spiraled out of control. You suddenly, you know, end up in a situation where you're writing about a serial uh, murderer who's being captured by people who are basically exactly like her, questioning her over like that, ah, just craziness. Uh, oh yes, she was in a a bit of a sticky situation. I think I mentioned in the last interview that that was the point where I left her fate up to, up to the readers. The readers. Yeah. And uh, the readers decided. They decided that they'd like to try and help her. There was a lot of um, cameos and suggestions of people um, who, you know, managed to get her out of the facility, and that whole arc ended after that. But uh, the story didn't continue much further after that, or you know, what happened? No, because um, I started going down the path of um, different ponies finding out. Um, the main six are going to start getting involved, or rather the other five of the main six, and uh, it's just going to get really difficult to control, and sooner or later Pinkamine is going to be overpowered by it all. Interesting. So uh, the story, and I'm assuming you didn't actually get to this part of the story, uh, or necessarily intend to uh, continue the story to the point where it'll actually reach this point, but your original concept was to actually have the other main characters actually kind of find out and eventually, you know, overwhelm her? Honestly, I had no plan for that. Oh. I I okay. didn't look that far ahead, in all honesty. And, um, you know, as far as what Pinkamine is doing, um, she's either going to end up dead or permanently imprisoned. She's it's, not going to have a happy ending. It's actually kind of funny that you say that, because I'm actually remembering back to our original interview where uh, there, that actually, this very same uh, topic came up, and I remember at the time, uh, you know, you, you were actually saying how, you know, you didn't necessarily see, you know, why uh, characters like this would have to have an unhappy ending uh, when, you know, like, the cards came down, and it's kind of interesting to see that now that you've kind of started moving away from the scene, you're sort of like, no, you know what, actually after what she's done, there isn't a happy ending. There, this isn't, you know, sunshine and roses. Yeah, I know. I mean, there's only so much, uh, you know, meddling in the universe that you can do to make, um, you know, this character continue to do these horrible things right. um, without it seeming illogical. <laughs> I can definitely, uh, I can definitely see that. I mean, there are some pretty horrible things that happen in this world, but generally, generally people who, uh, you know, who do horrifying things like this and on a scale that uh, this character does them they don't tend to get away with it there is a slim chance yeah there's that, a slim chance uh, there's you know there are famous serial killers like jack the ripper and uh and the zodiac killer who managed to get away with uh some pretty nasty stuff but vast vast majority of people don't get, you know get run caught. The sun, yeah they don't run up into the sunset so yeah, 
so the story, you know, at least as far as you're concerned, probably wasn't going to end on a happy note. Uh, at least for Pink Amina. Um, I remember there's a set, you know, there's another major character who you were less sure about when we talked earlier about this. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Scootaloo, I believe, was. Uh, yes. Scootaloo um, was also abducted by these um, Secret Service ponies, and she was a, a really important character in the blog. And uh, one of my biggest regrets is that. Her, her fate is left up in the air because she was never mentioned again. Oh, jeez. That's, um... Yeah, man, that's, uh... Doesn't bode well for her. No. Uh, what would you say if, uh... You know, if you were to say right now, you know, headcanon, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think happened to her? Um, she's probably in care somewhere. Okay. She's probably um, in an asylum somewhere, which, um is interesting, considering what we'll be talking about later. Oh my, I'm all sorts of intrigued. But for the time being, yes, uh, so, you know, you're kind of thinking she probably didn't, you know, she didn't get off scot-free, but she's probably not going to end up with the same level of completely uh, screwed over as uh, as Pink Amina. No, no, I, I shouldn't think so. That's good to know. Always, uh, you know, always nice to know that the kids make it out all right, or relatively speaking. But even though I, I did sort of screw up towards the end, I, uh, I still consider this, you know, this project a success, I think. Huh. Hey, you, you made a really you know, wonderful Tumblr that people obviously really cared about. And, you know, you obviously had a lot of fun while you were doing it, even if it kind of dried up by the end. So, you know, certainly not a failure. Now, how long did the, the whole thing end up being by the end? Um, it was a total of 61 posts, wow. um, at an average of 5 cells per post, 5 hand-drawn cells, so about 300 odd drawings. Hey, it's far from bad. There are graphic novels that have uh, less, uh, less images in those. There's a lot of people that, um, that I interacted with, um, or rather that they interacted with the character, um, that had a lot of fun and yeah. You know, that's the main thing, I think. That's Yeah, that's the important thing. Is, again, as long as people are enjoying themselves, then you've clearly done something right. With with obvious, you know, caveats, obviously, there are some things that you can do that will make people happy that are not good, even if you're making other people happy. But you know what? You know, fringe, horrible things aside, you succeeded. You succeeded in making people happy, and that's that's what's important in this situation. And I just wanted to, you know, expand in the Pink Amina a little bit as well because uh, um, the cupcakes was a little bit, you know, a little bit bland. I thought when I read it. <laughs> that's a, that's one way of describing it. Yeah. Not very intelligent is another way of describing it. Yes, yes. That's uh, yeah. Um, but no, that's you know, it's it's good to know that you know, even as the blog closes down, your memories of it are not negative. No, and no, I had a lot of fun with her. I really, I grew close to the character for whatever reason. And I enjoy drawing her every day. Uh, do you think you'll ever do anything else with this character or this blog uh, in future? Uh, you know, not necessarily continuing the storyline, because once you've kind of put a storyline to rest, unless you really have a real passion, uh, you know, later on to come back to it, it most likely isn't going to go much of anywhere, but... Yeah, you uh, spent so much time with this character and the stuff. Do you think you'll, you know, maybe still do drawings or possibly do something else with this character in a different story or something? Or are you pretty sure you're done with the Pink Mina character? I think uh, it is quite likely that I will end up drawing Pink Mina again. Hmm. As you say, it is uh, not going to be a blog. I'm almost certain that I'll never do a Pink Mina blog again. Um... But as far as the project goes, I sometimes I like to make uh, a souvenir of a, a project. So I might do like some uh, some bits of digital art just to you know remember the project by. Hey, that's more than fair. I know if I put as much work into a project as you have, I would definitely want to have some sort of souvenir for it to remember yeah. it by. Yeah, I just slap it in my wall and yeah. you know remember it. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, but you mentioned earlier that uh, you know you were that this wasn't going to be the last project you were working on, and uh, you left a tantalizing hint that 
uh, something involving Scootaloo's eventual fate in an asylum may have some sort of connection to said further endeavors. Yeah, you could see that. Do you I... uh, have anything you'd like to, you know, hint at in terms of, uh, you know, what you might be working on next? Well, um, yes. You see, um, I'm thinking about doing another Tumblr. Nothing certain for now. And it's not going to be as dark as the Aspen Camina Tumblr, but still fairly dark. Oh my. Well, and um, it, does in, it does feature an asylum. Ooh. Well, now I'm all sorts of interested. Asylums can be interesting settings for stories, especially if you're kind of dark, but not necessarily full-scale grimdark. Well, what, what the idea was um, that it revolves around uh, the characters Screwloose and Screwball. Hmm. How interesting. You're familiar with those characters? Uh, I believe so. I believe, uh, just uh, for the record, Screwloose was the barking uh, pony from the, uh, the Read Him and Weep episode. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the episode. If I'm wrong, sue me. Uh, but the, the, the barking dog pony and... Uh, screwball being the uh, pink pony with a little uh, propeller beanie in Return of Harmony Part 2. Yeah, she was made popular by, uh, you know, Discord and uh, him messing up the world, and uh, Screwball is, uh, seems to be messed up from that. Hi. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's actually sort of funny. I've seen so many, uh, you know, like for, for a character who appears basically in one frame, like, there's a whole bunch of... Liz Fandom is all about taking these tiny background characters and fleshing them out like crazy, but uh, Screwball is an interesting example of a character who, you know, appears in about a frame. Like, you know, she she's just there for, like, one little uh, background sight gag. There's not, like, a huge referential, you know, joke with her. She doesn't have, like, an episode focused around her. She doesn't appear in the background in any other episodes, but... People will love the heck out of her. She is all over the darn place. Well, the thing is that this sort of animation is uh, is very visual medium. Hi. So all it takes is just a certain look for a pony, you know, to catch people's inspiration. And that's clearly the case. They and made so a, a song that made her very popular, um, Daddy uh, Discord, true. I believe it was called. I believe you're right, yes, no. Again, you know, really gotta love, uh, you gotta love the passion and creativity that, you know, turns these, you know, essentially sight gags into, you know, wholly fleshed out characters. So that's what I intend to do, hopefully, with these, uh, these two particular characters. Wonderful. In, in my case, um, I'm going to say that Screwloose is the mother of Screwball. Fair enough. And, uh, that Screwball is largely fine, but Screwloose has, uh, fallen um, into a, a, a mental illness and that she has been committed into an asylum and separated from her daughter who she's not able to care for. Oh my. So the story is, is going to follow both of these ponies separately in alternating posts. Hmm. And uh, so, so one pony is going to be inside the asylum and the other pony is going to be on the outside. How interesting. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, two stories that intersect about a mother and daughter, uh, one of whom is kind of dealing with her own mental illness and one of whom is dealing with having a, you know, parent who is mentally unsound. Well, in Screwball's case, she would be adopted, I yeah. would think, because because she was taken out of Screwloose's hooves, so to speak, um, she would be adopted by another family, which we'll get into in the blog. Um, and Screwball's goal would be to try to find out about her um, original biological mother, with who she knows very little of. Hmm. It sounds sort of a little bit like uh, a, a Twain story. Twain story? Uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I messed up. No, Dickens. It's starting to sound like a Dick. I am so sorry. No, it's starting to sound like a Dickens story, a Charles Dickens story. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, oh, uh, how so? Oh well, you know, like uh, you know, adopted, uh, you know, adopted child trying to find out about a uh, parent, the parent in this horrible situation with like the the asylum, you know, human drama, 
uh, you know, these, uh, you know, like characters kind of dealing with these uh, big issues, dark, you know, kind of like dark, cynical views on the world, but also with that, you know, wonderful human, you know, uh, you know. That sounds a little element. bit like um, the uh, Stephen King. Stephen King. King. Yeah, he yeah does, it sounds does a little that, bit yeah. like that. Actually, yeah. Well, hey, I love both of those authors with a passion. And, you know, me saying that this story concept of yours actually is kind of reminding me of them. That's a good thing. That is a very good thing. I'm all kinds of impressed with this idea you're going with. I'm very flattered. Um, and, and, of course, Screwless on the other side of it. Um, she is in the asylum, and her posts are going to be to do with dealing with her mental condition, dealing with other inpatients which have all sorts of other mental conditions, hmm. like... Um, you know, sociopathy, uh, catatonia, uh, all sorts of different things, fits and stuff. Yeah. Um, and her trying to get visitation rights for her daughter and eventually be discharged from the hospital. Man, please, you, 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 you keep on uh, talking. The more you talk about the story, the more I kind of go like, wow, I really want to start reading this right now. It sounds like a really wonderful story, honestly. Oh, thanks very much. Yeah. Uh, what I'm going to do is, because it's, it features Screw Loose and Screw Ball, I'm going to be calling it Screwed. Hey! <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Well, I really hope that uh, you know, you're successful with this uh, blog, because as I said, it sounds like a story I'm all kinds of interested in. And I hope that uh, you know the fellows over... You know, uh, all the fans out there in Radio Land who are listening to this uh, end to end and appreciate my opinion should know, you know, should go and check this out once you start, which I'm sure we will mention on the show when you actually is. I don't is, I don't start right off the bat. Well, uh, nothing is finalized at the moment, but it's certainly a, an idea which I consider very promising, and it's the most likely project I'm going to start with. Well, if you do go with it, then I am all kinds of interested. And if you don't go with it, but you go with something else. I'm pretty sure that you know your uh, you know the creativity that you've displayed both in this concept and with your previous blog means that I'm guessing whatever you end up doing is probably going to be pretty good. Thanks very very much. So, for those of you who want to keep up on you know what uh, Miles Valentine is doing, you should probably go to his uh, DeviantArt account. Yes, uh, that'd be a good place to fall. Okay, go to the DeviantArt account, start a you know like bookmark it, favorite it, do whatever you need to do. And keep an eye on that journal because that'll probably be where you'll find the link to uh, the Tumblr before we manage to air it on end to end. Okay. At any rate, I think we're just time, but I want to thank you so much for coming back on the show. I'm so happy, you know, that uh, you know you uh, even if you're ending your story, that you're ending on a high note. Well, a high note uh, personally, and that you have this great new idea or ideas that you're gonna go with for stuff, and you're not just. Uh, yeah, you know, dropping the whole Tumblr scene. No, I, I think I'm going to take another <laughs> the, uh, the apple pie. As well, whatever you do, I'm sure it's going to be wonderful, and I'm absolutely certain that we're going to be, you know, bringing you back on to talk about it just as soon as you start up, because we always enjoy talking with you. Okay, thanks very much. That's very nice. Uh, for end to end, this has been Duhad talking with Miles Valentine and reminding you to go over, check out his DeviantArt account, and stay tuned for more end to end. See you guys next time.